guys, today I'm going to talk about the cover test. I stick loneliness, your lips, and the two coins of your eyes into my pockets. Yeah. So when the optometrist is swinging this back and forth, or going like this, they're doing the cover test. And it probably goes so fast that you might not even notice it. So this test is done to see how the eyes are aligned. You may have heard of or seen people having an eye turn, and when we're doing this, that's what we're measuring or gauging. First, you can have atropia. Atropia is when one eye fixates on the object that you're looking at and the other eye is turned. There are several names for this that are difficult to understand, like the little intricate differences, but just in case you've heard of it, strabismus, tropia, amblyopia, lazy eye, like all those things can mean the same thing. And since the, all those words are hard to explain, I might devote a completely different video to that. Aphoria is different. The first video that I ever posted to YouTube was me showing what aphoria might look like. Aphoria is when both eyes are in use they both fixate on the object. When only one eye is able to see, that eye looks at the object of interest, and then the muscles of the other eye will relax, and it'll cause the eye to go to its place of physiological rest. And physiological rest is just where your eyes would be if they weren't looking at something and interacting with your brain and everything, you know what I mean? So my eyes would regularly be turned out a little bit, but since I'm looking, at the camera, they're both looking at the camera. So eyes can be misaligned up or down or in or out, and if one is higher than the other, it's called a hypertropia. If the eyes are turned in or crossed, it's called an esotropia, and if the eyes are turned out, it's called an exotropia. So what your optometrist does first is the unilateral cover test, which they just cover one eye and then uncover it and that's checking for atropia. When they cover this eye, they look for this eye to see if it moves at all. And if it does, it, that means it's taking over fixation because the patient is asked to just look at a target far away. If there is movement and that eye does take over fixation, then that means that there's atropia. And then they go to the other eye. So if there isn't movement, there could still be a for it. This test is done doing the alternating cover test. And the reason it alternates like this is so that you break fusion. So when two eyes look at one object, there's fusion of the object. But if two eyes are looking at something different, like the object out there and the back of the occluder, then it breaks fusion. So there's no reason for my eyes to be looking in the same place. So then they will go to physiological rest. With just the occluder alone, it can be seen whether or not the patient has aphoria or atropia. Seasoned optometrists can tell how much of a turn in degrees or what we call prism diopters just by experience and looking at it. But something else that actually measures it is called a prism bar. So the prism bar will measure it precisely. And I have footage of my teacher, the head of our clinical skills lab department. She is doing it and she's explaining what she's seeing and I'll show that. This video was made for teaching purposes, to show us how it's done. So that's why she's explaining it really slow. But we have trained ourselves to see the movement in people's eyes, and if you've never trained yourself to do that, then you wouldn't see it. So here's a clip of that. You're looking at the T the whole time. Watch the right eye moves out and down. So we have a right ESO hypertrope. Moved outward, alternating esotropia. And now we'll move to the alternating cover test where the magnitude becomes significantly more prominent. Each eye is moving out, so I need a ver uh, horizontal prism bar and I need to neutralize that move. I use base out prism. Keep adding the base out until that movement stops. 
Right. And now I see mostly a vertical motion. With, and then I need to get a vertical prism bar to neutralize the vertical. So we've now, with the prism bar, had the ESO neutralized. And we're going to see the right eye is moving downward. So I have to add base down until that movement stops. Approximately three to four right hyper and 12 right or 12 alternating esotropia. So what does this all mean? An eye turn can exhibit if there's a lack of coordination between the eye muscles of the two eyes, or if one muscle is much weaker than the other. Uh, it can also involve the brain, so it does get very complicated. You can be born with your eyes misaligned, or it can be acquired, and it might cause no problems at all, you might not even notice it, or sometimes it can result in bad binocular vision, bad depth perception, sometimes it can lead to double vision, and people don't like seeing double vision. So sometimes they'll just turn off the signal from one eye to the brain and only rely on one eye. That's called suppressing one eye. And that can be a problem because then you don't have depth perception. So if there is a problem with that, treatment can be started. And treatment is best done and usually done on children. And because as a person gets older, their eyes and their eye muscles are less malleable. People are less reactive to treatment and less likely to stick to it. But treatment of binocularity is complicated and it involves a lot of trial and error and a lot of different means. And I haven't really delved into this. We have a course on binocular vision coming up that I haven't taken yet. And after that, maybe I'll be able to shed more light onto how it's treated. But for now, I just want to tell you what the cover test is all about. There are many different videos on YouTube about the cover test and what it means. I'll try to link as many of those as I can find. Basically, the cover test is just to see how your eyes are lined up. I reach into my pocket for some small change. I reach into my pocket for some small change, yeah.